unforgiving North Atlantic. Home of the multi-million dollar sword fishing industry. Diamonds, baby, diamonds. That's a day maker right there. At one of the deadliest fishing grounds in the world. It's the biggest storm that I've seen on a weather map. Mother Nature packs a punch, that's for sure. Watch out! Only the bravest make the journey. I can't believe you told me to go to Newfoundland. And only the lucky will survive. Get down, Rex! Keep going down! I ain't gonna die for this crap. But they will all put their lives on the line. Back down the hatch. Here it comes. Watch out! Watch out! America's eastern seaboard, the race is on. Over the next two months, thousands of swordfish will converge on the Grand Banks. Tied to the dock in Bay Bulls, Newfoundland, is the legendary fishing vessel, Hannah Bowden. This season, um, back aboard the Hannah Bowden, my old ride. I love the Hannah Bowden, have a lot of history aboard this boat had a great deal of success. I mean, I really feel I reached the top of my game aboard this vessel. From 1991 to 1997, Linda Greenlaw ruled the Grand Banks as captain of the Hannah Bowden. I was captain of the Hannah Bowden uh, for six years. One of the trips we made was the trip that was featured in the book and the movie, The Perfect Storm. People know that this boat survived the perfect storm, and um, that's a big deal. But when Captain Greenlaw left sword fishing, so did her vessel. I think it's been fairly close to 15 years since the Hannah Bowden was last on the Grand Bank. Resurrecting the boat has been a $350,000 operation. It's expensive, but I feel like I need to put more fish on the boat because of it. Captain Greenlaw's also upgraded her crew. Last season, she discovered old friends don't always make good deckhands. Give me in! Oh, put that away! I'm done! This year, she's brought aboard some veteran fishermen. Johnny Brewer, he has run this boat before, willing to go with me as engineer, which is really important. Uh, I've got Carl, he's an animal on deck. Kenny is going to be our fish cleaner. And Nate and Harry I have from last year. After two seasons struggling to reestablish herself as one of the best in the business, Captain Greenlaw is out of excuses. I've got the best boat in the fleet with all brand new gear, the best stuff money can buy. I've hand selected a crew. The only question mark is my ability to put the boat on the fish. Just a few yards away, Captain Scotty Drabinowitz is also gearing up for the sword fishing season. We've put on about $13,000 worth of bait, $15,000 worth of fuel, $20,000 worth of tackle. So we got a lot of money riding on us here right now that we got to go pay for. Back aboard the Eagle Eye 2, Scotty is ready to defend his title as the fleet's top fisherman for the third season in a row. Starfish. Now there's a $1,000 bill with fins. Good man, good man. <laughs> Man, I haven't seen this boat in many years. Morning, Skipper. What's happening? Not to coming over to check out your boat. Captain Scotty also has a history with the Hannah Bowden. Long time no see. Yes, sir. How are you? Good. How you doing? Real good. Good, good. Getting excited? I can't wait. We're going to be leaving here real soon, so. Yeah. Figured I'd come over, check her out. Been many, many years since I've been on this boat. This is where uh, I got my start. Good memories and, and bad memories. I lost a good friend of mine on this boat many, many years ago. His name was John Bakarowski. Actually, he took my place on the boat. He was lost at sea. So that was pretty tragic in my life. How about a tour of the old girl? All right, bring you back in time? Yeah, Let's absolutely. Go. We've got the old Hannah Bowden back into service here. 
Yeah, welcome to the wheelhouse. I don't think much has changed here. No? Still got the big old steering wheel? I really feel now, like, with this boat, that the playing field is more level. Actually, I think you have a little bit more advantage. Oh, you, come on like, now! You've got more guys, you're gonna set more gear, and you got a faster boat. So, you I look forward to it. You know what? I wish you the best of luck, and we will not be far behind you, my friend. Right on. All right. Take it easy, and we'll see you out there. Yeah, catch him up, Scotty. Yep, same to you. I hope I can uh, step it up this year and be competitive. Sure, I want to be Scotty. It's kind of the goal. I do want her to do well. We need to do well. But the fact of the matter is, is she's the competition. Game on, Linda. <laughs> Looking once again to outcatch the competition is Scotty's steady crew. 95% puts us on fish and you don't go home empty-handed. Also back for another season Thank you. is shark tagger wow. Lisa Natanzen. There's not a lot of scientists that get to go to the Grand Banks. It's a really unique experience and I'm very lucky to be out here. This year we're going to be doing some swordfish satellite tagging. We'll be tagging sharks again. It helps us to catch fish and it also helps keep track of how healthy of a population we have. But for Newfoundlander Tommy Fox, two months at sea comes with a price. That's where Dad's going to sleep. Dad, I got to go catch some big swordfish. But some monster tunas. But, but they're really hard to catch. Tommy just saying goodbye to the wife and kid, and then we can finally get underway. OK, give me kisses, bye bye. Mwah, love you. It's never easy leaving your family, but that's the life of a fisherman. You grow up here fishing, right? Your father's fish, your grandfather's fish. That's what fishermen do, leave their family behind and go out to the Grand Banks fishing. They come back and put bread on the table. All right, guys, let's go. We're headed out to the Grand Banks, start of the fall swordfish season here. Scotty is the first off the dock. 2010, see what we do this Grand Bank season. Can't wait to get out there and start catching some fish. In less than 48 hours, Scotty will reach the Grand Banks. The area I'm headed to, I'm really hoping to catch over 100,000 pounds in two trips this fall season. So um, I've got pretty high expectations of what I want to accomplish. You never know, that's why I love it. It's a gamble. It's like going to Vegas. Twelve hundred miles southwest in Barnegat Light, New Jersey. Captain Chris Clem is back aboard the Francis Ann. Hope we didn't forget nothing. He's anxious to get his young crew to the fishing grounds. But time to go, folks. We're waiting. We're waiting to leave here. It's time to go. There's just one problem. We're leaving in three minutes now, and this window's broke. The newest member of the crew can't even get out of the parking lot. Some technical difficulties. I can't get my window to go up. What are you doing? I'm trying to disconnect my battery. And... How are you supposed to get your window up with your battery disconnected? Boom! Nothing. See that? No power. Oh, man, here comes Slick to yell at you. Oh, great. Slick's coming. You better get that window up. Cappy's coming over. Might not be good. Butter! So Try rolling good. your window up since you've done all this. Yeah. Try it right now. Wah, wah, wah. Well, anyway, we're leaving in five minutes, buddy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. This is like my worst nightmare. Butter, we're out Great. <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe this. Oh! It's working! <laughs> it just went up! Throw the lines. Time to go. For the Greenhorn, it's a bad first impression to make on one of the fleet's most volatile captains. Working with Slick, we bounce through guys. I've worked with almost 30 people in three years, and I think three of them have lasted more than six months. He's not an easy guy to work with. Take the paper towels out of the case, like I just said, and stack them behind the freezer. 
Deck boss Lemmy Eastburn has seen this before. I started working for Slick when I was 18 years old, and I was the low man on the totem pole, and I was getting yelled at every day from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Nice job putting this box on here for me. Wait till I get up there, because this is your fault. I expect Lemmy to step up to the plate. If he can't back down, someone else will do it. There's two other guys on the boat. Slick can get a little crazy sometimes, yell and scream. Get the out of there! No! But he expects the best from his crew. Get off the I can only repeat myself so many times on how things have to be done or should be done. Don't have 18 pairs of boots down there. You see something going wrong, you know, tell them that's not the way we do it. One of you guys will be in charge of the toilet paper, and every time I got to stock it, you owe me 100 bucks. 20 hours a day, you got to be on the ball. Some people can't handle that. Coming up, the big eye is back. We're going to throw some big boats on the Grand Banks. What's up? And later. The machine just shut down, John. We could be dead out here in the water. This could be a short trip. Three hundred miles northwest in Bay Bulls, Newfoundland, is the Hannah boat. We're all uh, baited up, fueled up, grubbed up. We're just waiting for a little bit of tackle here. We're going to throw the lines and get offshore. Linda Greenlaw is back aboard the boat she captained at the height of her sword fishing career. I'm always psyched to leave the dock, but this trip, uh, a little more excited than usual. It's really fun to be back aboard the Hannah boat. You ready? ready? All right. Been ready. Been ready. <laughs> That's right. We're not going to come out here and not catch any fish. I got all the faith in the world in Linda. We'll load this boat. She said we're going to load it, and we're staying until we're loading it. We'll load it. Got everything I need. It's a ton of pressure on me right now. Got the right ingredients, got the boat, got the crew, got the gear. I know the fish are out there. It's the time of year to put a slammer aboard this boat. I'm nervous as hell. Not going to lie. Go ahead and make some money. That's what we're here for. Just take the slack out of that one. I'm going to try and spring ahead on it. And then when I back off, hopefully it'll come right off the cleat. Feels good to be taking my old boat away from the dock. For the first time in 15 years, the Hannah boat is heading back to the Grand Banks. I'm a nervous wreck. There's a lot on the line here. Three hundred miles east. The Eagle Eye 2 is the first boat to stake a claim on the fishing grounds. No other boats in the area at the moment. We've got it all to ourselves. Actually, it's a little too quiet out here. Captain Scotty is looking for a place to set his line. Right now, I'm doing my first down temp of the trip. Swordfish gather to feed on the edge where the cold Labrador current meets the warm Gulf Stream. A temperature gauge helps zero in on the fish by measuring the water temperature 50 feet below the surface. Interesting. Looks like we do have a true edge here, which is good. Now all we need is a few swordfish to cooperate, and we'll have ourselves a ball game. Party time for the set. Everybody is ready to go, all anxious. Ready to get some fish, ready to get some fish right now. A little tight. Our goal this year is to break our previous record of 57,000 pounds for one trip. Hopefully, we can do it less than 20 sets. We can get 6,000 this year or more. We smash beautiful. Let it go, Fox. Yeah, there goes the first beaver. First beaver of 2018 season. Every few seconds, the crew baits a hook, throws it in the water, and clips it to the main line. Over the next five hours, they'll repeat the process hundreds of times, laying out 40 miles of main line and a thousand baited hooks. This year, I'm kissing the bait for luck. Mwah. 
In the morning, the crew will haul the line back in and see if Scotty has found the fish. We're first out. Hopefully this is the right move and we're in the right spot. Um, the only thing that's going to tell me that is when we haul back tomorrow and we see what's on the hooks. Last paper for the first set of the 2010. Here she goes. All done. Woohoo! Come on with the fish. Dawn, the Eagle Eye 2 has circled back to the start of their 40 mile main line. We just pulled up to the first beeper here, our first haul back, 2010 Grand Bank season. Let's see what's going to happen here today. Hopefully, we rock it. Captain Scotty is about to find out if he's on the swords. Daryl's got the controls tying up here right now. We should get hauled very shortly. The crew is hoping to start big and bring in around 40 fish. And with a thousand hooks in the water, any one of them could have life on the line. First hook, empty. Stack it up. Fill up the boat anytime soon, this way. After 50 hooks, the first sword of the season is a marker, a hundred pounder, worth about $500. We only had one swordfish in the first section. Really not the best of signs there, but uh, we still have a lot of gear to go and you know, anything can happen. We got something. We got something right here, holy smokes. You're in the live line, Fox, go ahead. Yeah. Trying to shake that hook, something fierce. With the monster sword fighting hard to get off the hook. Yeah, he turned. It's a monster. The crew switches to a live line to pull it in by hand. Just a real strong fighting fish, though. That's why I'm here with the harpoon and everybody's on the ready. Ah, oh, you gotta know when to give and you gotta know when to take up on the line. You boiled it down to gravy, that's what it comes to. Fox has got a battle going right now. Don't panic. Don't panic. Well over a thousand dollars here. Fish hasn't given up yet. We're still fighting hard. Timmy! He's just playing with us there, no? Tim against us. Right now, he's still winning. As the fish breaks the surface, Scotty takes a shot. Oh, I got him. One, two, three, roll. One, now. Now. Oh. Oh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> nice big fish. What? That solid 400 pound fish there. Nice. Yeah! We got him in the boat. Fox did an awesome but job I'm... of fighting that fish. Yeah, I wish the little fellow was here to see that big fish. He'd be still jumping around the deck to Amazing. Looking at close to $2,000 thrown on the boat with that fish. Helps the day out tremendously. Despite the 400 pound sword, the crew is far from their goal of 40 fish. 
And there's only 200 hooks left in the water. Good looking fish, pretty colors on it. That's it for first haul back, all done. Today's haul put 16 swords in the hold, not even half of what the crew was hoping to catch. We're still in search mode, just trying to explore as much water as we can before the crowd gets here. You know, so that's the name of the game, you know. Complacency uh, does not equal highliner. in New Bedford, Massachusetts, is the big eye. Is that where you're gonna go, that gear locker place? Captain Chris Chompers Hansen is ready to go, but his crew hasn't shown up yet. We're more closer to the bottom dropping out than, than we were last year. Last season, Chompers' bad attitude nearly caused a mutiny. I've been on this boat for three months, three months. I've seen a paycheck. Stupid Don't talk Get be right on the deck of his boat. Unbelievable. Now, he's scraped together a new crew, and he's waiting for them to arrive. Usually there's three other guys on the boat doing what one guy's doing right now. We've been here for nine days, and we ain't had a crew. We've been waiting on the crew the whole time. If you don't have a good reputation, and people think that you're not going to get paid, they're not going to want to go, and they're going to talk bad about your boat. And then it, they, then it's just where you can't get a crew. Until the crew arrives, all the prep work is left to Chomper's brother, Woody. Oh, come on. I am the first mate of the boat. They can thin, broke or not, while well, I'm here. It should be like that with anybody if you're a first mate. My youngest brother, Woody, he has stuck by me no matter what. We've had some bad times, we've had some good times, but rain or shine, Woody's been there for me. As long as the crew gets here, you know, that's all we're worried about. As long as we can give make our trip to the banks, we're happy, you know. What's up, coppers? Oh, man, y'all are finally here. Yeah, we made it. You ready to go catch some fish? Would y'all walk here? Yeah. That's right, man. What's up, ready? Woody? Nice to have you part of the crew, man. Ready to rock and roll, man. We're getting out of here, finally. Time to go. All right, let's go to lines. With no time to spare, Chompers starts the five-day steam to the Grand Banks in the fleet's smallest boat. Steaming hard, steaming fast, headed for the tail of the banks, late September. We're going to take this little boat out there and go show some, uh, show some big boats on the Grand Banks what's up. Got the first mile behind us. Now we only got 999 miles left in speed. Despite the late start, Chompers is feeling good. Scott, which is the oldest person on the boat, he is from the same county that I'm from. I fished with him on deck years ago. And Matt, I think he'll do fine as our greenhorn. I don't really know uh, what my position's gonna be yet. Uh, so whatever the guys tell me to do, that's what I'll be doing. And my man, John, he'll do good. He's healthy. He's not lazy. He's not got no issues. Help him tighten that up. Set that right there. I'll get it. Chomper likes me to fill in when I come in over here. He needs a guy that can uh, watch over the gear, make sure things on deck are going right, correct, take a peek in the engine room. As far as I'm concerned, I'm the deck boss on this trip. I think there's a few guys on this boat that's Probably a little worried, Woody being one of them. It could get nasty.
150 miles from New Bedford, Massachusetts. The big eye is two days into a five-day steam to the Grand Banks. Hey, John, uh, how many of these we got to do? We're probably going to make up around 2,500 to 3,000 liters. To fish for swords, the crew needs leaders, 25-foot lines that connect hooks to the main line. It's the crew's job to make them all before they reach the fishing grounds. Me and Matt's been out here pretty much all morning starting to build our gear. It's just me and Matt. Everybody else is down in the rack sleeping. The early bird does get the worm. So when Chomps wakes up and we're out on deck, we're not going to get chewed out. Those guys will. Since leaving the dock, John's been moving in on the job of deck boss. When Woody and Scott get out here, I'm going to give them hell. I'm going to say nothing. I'm the greenhorn. I have no opinion. I was fixing to come check on you. I thought you died. John thinks he's a badass. We'll find out whatever he does. You want a bet? Yeah. That you can build more leaders faster than me? All right, let's do it, then. How many are we going to do? All right, let's make a bet on who can make 20 leaders the fastest. I lose, I shave my head. He lose, he shaves his head. I think Woody needs a haircut real bad. No, no, I think I'm going to get him. He tried to, anyways. It's going to be cold, no hair. Ready, set, go! It takes a steady hand to thread the line through a hook and crimp it together. But John's shaking, he's nervous. Beautiful brown locks. Be gone. He's got six there, like same speed. It's gonna be, it's gonna be by a hair, literally. Eight eight. All right, Woody, come on now. Don't let Johnny beat you now. It's gonna be cold with no hair. Either way, this is a win-win situation. Looks like to me. Stuff's getting done. And I'm gonna get entertainment out of it. Too. That's 14. What is ahead now? <laughs> I believe Woody's gonna pull up the upset here in a minute. Come on, Woody. I got two snaps, bro. He's got one left, and I finish mine. That's it. I won. Oh, man. John gets to keep his mullet for another year. Johnny really didn't want to lose, and Johnny almost lost. So that would have been the funny part. That's a bet. That's pulling my hair. It's almost off. <laughs> Woody's a very good sport, you know? He held up to his end of the bat, and I know if it was up to me, it'd have been a tough decision, but I would have still done it. One hundred miles southeast, the Francis Ann steam is coming to an end. Right now, we need to get our hooks in the water, and we need to see what's around here. We need to start fishing. Captain Slick has reached his fishing spot. Biggest trip ever on the boat was up this way last year. Same water temperatures. Hopefully there'll be a nice concentration of fish here when the moon comes up. Slick is hoping to repeat the success he had last year on George's Banks, an area a thousand miles south of the Grand Banks. All right, here we go. 2010, George's Banks. First set, we're throwing the beeper. Ready, Mac? Throw it. It's the first set of the season, and the first set for the Greenhorn. Make sure he doesn't spat now. Light, smooth, no tangles. Focus. Focus. Always pull three locusts for me. Once I pick up my last one, that's how I know there's a float. That means our main center. Keep the pace going. Fast and smooth. <laughs> right left? Set that locust, baby. As the deck boss, it's Lemmy's job to make sure the crew keeps up during the five-hour set. I've got to keep the same pace for the 
five hours, you're back there. The more you slow down, the farther and farther the hooks get apart. And I don't like my hooks far apart. Butter! And they're already falling off, and I know why. Come on, Butters. Yes, sir, and later, jerk off. If you start getting slower after this section, we're going to be the whole set. Usually the sections are 30 minutes long. So far, we're 38 minutes. Not really a good start for Butters. We'll get it together. Slick will make them get it together. About halfway through the set, guys are starting to lose pace pretty good. We don't have an extra guy on deck. Ever. Ever. This is it all the time. Three of us back here. So let's go charge him up a bit. By dawn, the Francis Ann set has been in the water seven hours. First call back, 2010 fall sword season. George's Banks, baby. Whether it's something on our line, I don't know. Captain Slick's looking for the George's Banks fishing grounds to pay off. First hook empty. Wah, wah, wah. Long. Give me a couple of fish. So far, nothing but empty hooks. Empty hooks. Almost a full section into it. No fish. 100 hooks in. They've got nothing. Oh, come on, fish. Sword. 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 Red sword! Red sword! I don't think he's big enough. I'm gonna measure him anyway just to make sure. They gotta be 47 inches from their lower jaw to the fork of their tail. Nope. 45 inches right there. He has to be 47 to keep. Sword of the trip, throwback sword, about a 10 pounder. Not much bigger than the bait we just bought it on. Unbelievable, man. I can't take it. It's not looking good. Blank, bloody, blank, blank, blank. After 500 empty hooks, Slick heads inside and leaves the rest of the hall in the hands of deck boss Lemmy. Get us a fish, Lem. I got a new truck to buy. Butters needs a new truck. I got windows falling off. Yeah, he lets me haul gear a lot more now than he used to. You know, I got to pay attention a lot more when I'm doing this. I really got to run these guys when I'm doing this. I got a fish. Jump, Big tuna, it's a big, big tuna. Eye. It's a nice tuna fish. 
Yellowbird. The fall season is all about swords, but tunas are always a welcome addition to the hold. This 55 pound yellow fin is worth around 250 bucks. We got fish. something else here too. That means got another we got fish on. on. We got, we got one. I don't know. Nice tuna fish. I haven't caught a damn thing all day for three seconds. Let me steps up, catches two fish right off the bat. One's going down in the hole and one's coming on the boat. That's what we like to see. Son of a bitch got something else. Come on, Levy! Swordfish! Nothing! Come on, Levy! Atta boy! Yeah! Nice job, Levy. Levy, you may not be from my scene, but you're my boy. Way to go. Fish on deck has Slick back at the hauler, with 200 hooks left in the water. Levy broke the ice, that's all I know. Swordfish, oh, swordfish! Oh, that's swordfish! That's what we're looking for right there. Sawfish. Nice, nice. Swordfish. Light sword. Gas. Maka sword. Woo! Hot rail. Hot rail. That's about a hundred car marker right there. The zone! Hell yeah! <laughs> fish on. Hey, Tuna! Come on, fish! We're heating up. We're on fire. That's a nice size one. Something good here. Go, on, fish! Don't let him get away! Yeah! There we go. Good Live Tuna. Good start, good start. Thanks to Lemmy. That golden glove. Slick set on George's banks has paid off with 18 swords and eight tuna. 2,200 pounds of fish worth about $11,000. We'll be staying here, yeah? Absolutely, we'll be sitting here again tonight. Life here. Twelve hundred miles northeast is the Hannah Boat. It's been a long time coming. We've come a long way. Ready to go. Captain Linda Greenlaw has finally reached the Grand Banks fishing grounds. No money was spared in rigging this boat for this fishery, but it's still, it's brand new stuff. It's untried. The hydraulics haven't been tested. The drum hasn't been tested. We don't have the blocks hauling back. We don't know if they're lined up right. Brand new beeper buoys. Oh yeah, I'm nervous. It's gonna work. Guys, ready? This one is gonna be the first hook of the trip. It's gonna catch big ass fish tomorrow. We'll start here and see what happens. For the next five hours, the crew will lay out the 40 mile main line. Scotty's gonna have to move over a little bit this year. We'll show him up. We got a good crew, good captain, and a lot of bait. <laughs> I hope we will. I know we will. Linda's a good captain. Well, she's had a record trips I was fishing with her. Hopefully she can do it again. I want this trip to be so good. I want so badly for this trip to be good. I think everyone's pretty much um, has big numbers in mind. And God, I hope I can put big numbers on the boat. Just before dawn on the Grand Banks. Getting ready for our first haul back. Pretty excited, I just hope everything works all right. Captain Linda Greenlaw's renovation of the Hannah Bowden is about to be put to the test. Now we've been working towards this morning for well over two weeks now, and um, I guess time will tell. We'll see what happens. First beeper's on board. Just getting the hydraulics turned on. Remember little things. Doesn't 
coming here. Something coming. Something coming. Something. Here it comes. Yep, sir. IPMs up and drop three to nothing. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble with the air control here. Um, I lose RPMs and I'm having trouble getting reversed. I got nothing. Without the air controls, there's no way to put the boat in gear. Be dead out here in the water and not be able to go in here at all, you know. And worst case scenario, you'll have to be towed in. After just 48 hours at sea, the Hannah boat was shut down. Big disappointment if we had to go in for her to cut our trip short, make no money. I was here for a week for nothing. No, we're out here to fish. We're not out here for a scenic voyage. Not the best start. Without the air controls, this could be a damn short trip. If I can't haul the gear, I better not set it out. If I can't set it out, I guess I better go home. You guys are working on it now. This one here, but it's the wrong kind of fit. Yeah. Don't be in a world of hurt. We'll pose for this one. We're all done. Broken down in the middle of their first haul, the Hannah Bowdens put less than a thousand pounds in their hold. And at the end of the first week, the Francis Ann takes the lead. As they set their main line for the second time this season. Well, what do we got? 10 to 15 tonight? We're gonna start feeling the effects of Hurricane Igor. They're heading right for us, more or less. Keeps on the path that's coming. This season on Swords. Back down the hatches. Here we come. The largest storm in a decade threatens to wipe out the fleet. It's basically as high and as long as the whole eastern seaboard. And this year, Where the, f did you just f the battle for Swords gets personal. What we're doing is just making Linda look like a f moron. I can't believe you told me to go to f Newfoundland. Stupidest mistake ever. Woohoo! 